Folks, welcome to another edition of Ballots for Bernie. We're here at Next Space in Berkeley with our election integrity guru, Jim Soper, from VRTF. And today we're going to be talking about legislation, how to introduce a bill to our legislative folks in Sacramento, and how to get it passed. So, Jim, let's talk about why this is important. Um, we've had lots of good people going out and observing how elections are conducted, people campaigning, which is, of course, important. Mm -hmm. And they find out what needs to be improved. But you're not, some of the improvement will happen just because the people in the state capitol will make it happen. Uh, as an example, they apparently have gotten the message that the entire problem with crossover ballots that people who were registered Republican couldn't vote for Bernie or something, they're going they they're going to work on it in the next mm -hmm. couple of years. So mm -hmm. they got that message. Let's see what comes up. All right. But there are things that are going on that uh, we need to push harder for, and it's not going to happen unless the public comes in and says. We need this. Mm -hmm. We want to know that there are elections are properly conducted. Right. Because unless they think that the public thinks there's a problem, which might sway their vote, yeah, they're not going to act. So, folks, we need you to get involved. All right. This is a long-term action. This is We've been at it for eight years, and we're still learning. This is not something you do, write a, write a little letter and it's done, no. This is, you prepare for it, you, you look for who's going to be the next Secretary of State, make sure, try to find somebody that's good and get them to campaign. Right. There's a lot of pieces that come together, mm -hmm. but a small group of people, the Voting Rights Task Force is essentially four people. We've had far more impact than four people would normally have because we've been focused on this, mm -hmm. on talking to the decision makers, mm -hmm. and we get stuff done. It takes a lot of work. It's easier than you think, and it's more fun than people realize. Oh, we have a ball when we go out there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it takes a lot of sustained work and focus. Mm -hmm. But then we have an impact far beyond uh, writing stuff on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And we can use social media to promote these ideas, yeah. to get folks involved, but we actually need feet in the street activism. Folks, see the shirt on today? I was at a, um, a surge, which is uh, showing up for racial justice action in Lake, at Lake Merritt in Oakland today. So it's one thing to post your videos about horrible things that are happening to people in our streets at the hands of police brutality. It's a completely different thing. It's the next step to show up. And what we're trying to get the message out on today through Ballots for Bernie and many of our election integrity cohorts across the country are trying to get the message out with us that is unless we can affect our elections process, unless we can demand and see transparency come to full fruition in our elections into election integrity process and our elections process, then it's a moot point for everything else that we're doing. Unless we can get our legislators in these seats to make laws that are going to affect our daily lives, then it's, it's an incomplete picture. So we want to get out in the streets, be active for the issues that we care about, move election integrity to the top of the list. All right, Jim, let's talk some more about what is the message that we're trying to bring to our legislators at the state capitol and in Sacramento and to um, our folks at home, our activists at home. Our activists at home and across the country, mm -hmm. you tune your message to your audience. Let's mm -hmm. start with that. Mm -hmm. But when we go up to the capitol, we have found that Republicans can be our best allies mm -hmm. on a number of issues. We're in a democratic state. We've had staffers tell us they don't trust Democrats running the election. So I'm not going to go out and talk about how the Republicans stole the XYZ election. Okay. That's just dumb. I'm going to say 
we can uh, know that these elections are accurate. We don't know that they're fair. We don't know that they're accurate. We need to be able to prove to the public mm -hmm. and to the losers, which is really the critical point. We have to prove to the losers that um, they lost. And that's something that didn't Fair and square. Fair and square. And that's something we didn't have in June here in California with the primaries. The hundreds of thousands of Bernie people across the country who were supporting Bernie did not, many of them did not walk away saying, we lost. Mm -hmm. And I think that had an impact on the November election. We need to be able to prove to everybody that they lost the same thing in, in many other countries. If, in fact, that's what happened. If, in fact, that's what happened, correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I mm -hmm. can't prove it one way or another. Mm -hmm. I want to get to a position mm -hmm. where we can be, have high confidence that these were the results. Right. And he may have lost, he may not have lost. I don't know. And we, the thing is such a mess right now. Mm -hmm. And we won't know until we can get a look at the ballots. Thank you, Ray Lutz. Yes. We've had a big move forward with Ray Lutz's uh, lawsuit down in San Diego. Yeah. Very happy. Uh, we'll save that for another live stream. Yes, we want to hear about it. He's, Ray's going to make an announcement on mm -hmm. January 30th about Coming his court Coming up the next trial. couple of days, right? Check your Press Facebook conference. page. We'll be posting that. it on um, ballots for Bernie as yeah. well. Um, but, I mean, Bev Harris quoted... Richard Hayes Phillips and said, you know, the only proof you have that an election, the election results were not correct is by counting the ballots. That is true. And that's true. And so we need to count the ballots. Unfortunately, in the recounts in November, we did, that didn't happen. And none of the states did that properly happen. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. Was that election correct or is he not? Mm -hmm. I don't know. There were millions of people out there saying, uh-uh. Mm -hmm. And we have a problem. We need to fix it. So to me, when I go to Sacramento, it's we need to be able to prove that these results are correct. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. Mm -hmm. Given that the machines are hackable, given the insider access to them, given a thousand other reasons, we can't do that. We need to get to a better place with that. Mm -hmm. All right. So Allison is filming for us. She's going to let us know if you've got any questions mm -hmm. um, coming up. So let us know, folks. All right. So Jim, let's talk about the key players. That's the that's the start. You need to know who the the key mm -hmm. players are. When I was working for a software company, I wasn't a salesman, although I did lots of demos. But I read a couple books about selling. One which is called Power Based Selling, and it sort of appalled me. But he said find out who the decision makers are. Mm -hmm. Talk to the decision makers. Don't talk to the other people. Sometimes you don't really know who they are and, and when he, this guy goes into a company he has to find out within the structure how to find out who the, power, who the real power brokers are and you will hear arguments that even behind the public apparatus of government there's people pulling strings. Well, I can't tell you who those are. I don't know who those are. I've got some ideas, and mm -hmm. yeah, if I we've tried occasionally to talk to a couple of them, but haven't gotten very far. We'll go with what the game is as a setup. The most important uh, group of people is the election committees and the assembly and the senate. And we'll talk a lot about California here. There's going to be variations in a lot of other states, but. I think this will give you pretty much an idea of, of where to look. The election committees look at the election bills and they vote yes or no, this is good policy. So the people who are on the committees, mm -hmm. they make the decisive votes. And what we've learned over time is that really it's the chair of the policy committee that has an awful lot of clout. Mm -hmm. And he or she will make a recommendation usually, not always, but usually make a recommendation which is supposed to be followed by the members of the majority party on the committee. Mm -hmm. They listen to the committee consultant who have been in Sacramento the same people for 10 years. These people are very good. They're, they're the real experts. Mm -hmm. and you want to go talk to them 
before the bill gets voted on, sit down and say, well, this is why we're doing it, and what do you think, and are there changes? Because the committee chair will talk to those consultants, and both the Assembly Elections Committee and the Senate Elections Committee have these consultants. They will uh, issue a report the, in Sacramento the Friday beforehand, usually, and sometimes it's, if the hearing's on Wednesday, they come up with it Monday, but ahead of time, uh, they will issue a, an analysis of the bill, in which they say, we think blah, 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 blah. The way it works in Sacramento, you, if you are, have some expertise, because these guys don't care about political pressure. Mm -hmm. They're there to, to, is this good policy or not? Mm -hmm. So if you have some expertise, you write them by 5 o'clock Wednesday beforehand, that's a week before, mm -hmm. and say, well, we think this bill is good or bad because whatever. Mm -hmm. This is that where you need the policy wonks. This yes. is where you need the policy wonks. And we've seen some changes happen there by going in and talking with them or, or sending them an email. Go in and talk with them at least once a couple times. Get to know them so that you get a feel for them. Uh, they get a feel for you. We, we especially we see something written by Nicole Becker. I know it's good. Mm -hmm. I know it's good. So right. these are the real influential people. Then when you go in and, and try to push a, uh, a bill, you will inevitably get the question, what does the Secretary of State think about this? And we're getting it, we're trying to introduce bills now, and we don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to have to go back, we're going to go back again, and I think we're going to have to respond to the question. We did this eight years ago where we were trying to get a bill that passed and introduced, and we got asked the question, um, what does Secretary of State say? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Ask them. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden, the Secretary of State's getting calls from legislators about this bill. Within a week, we got a call saying, could we come out and sit down with Deborah Bowen's top two people? Mm -hmm. It's hard as a citizen sometimes to get in and talk to these people, but when the legislators call up and say, what do you mm -hmm. think, then all of a sudden you get their attention. It's the backdoor strategy. I like it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we're going to have to do it again this mm -hmm. time, although we've been on friendly basis with uh, Padilla's staff. It's, I think we're going to have to start doing that because I've written There's a couple. There's a lot of people knocking on that door these days. And, yeah, a lot of people knocking on the door. Friendly and unfriendly. Friendly and unfriendly. <laughs> and when you get legislators calling, then they have to respond. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Secretary of State is important. Find a good candidate to run. Mm -hmm. The activists in California got Deborah Bowen elected because they were talking to her almost two years ahead of time. And they sat down and talked with her and understood she got it. And then we, we masked up that entire campaign to get her elected, and it worked. And it was really, really important. And with Alex Padilla, uh, a year before the election, he was saying, yeah, we need to sort of look into Internet voting, two years before. And people talked with him, and he changed his tunes to, no, we can't do it. That was important. Yes, really was. important steps. So that Secretary of State is a huge, mm -hmm. uh, has a huge influence. Mm -hmm. Huge is the like the joke. Huge. <laughs> um, the registrars. Uh, in other states, they call them county clerks or elections officials. We have the California Association of Clerks and Election Officials. They have a lot of influence on this. They should because they're the people who have to make the election work. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't have be the only ones to have influence on this, but they need to be listened to. And so we've gotten more to try to talk to them, and we'll probably if we get a bill introduced, we will go out and scatter around the various counties and sit down with them one by one and try to get support within their legislative committee. They have their own legislative committee where they sit down and talk about bills and vote to do nothing, support, oppose, or take no position. Let me stop you right here, Jim, for just a second. So this is a place where folks at the local le level could actually make an impact with their registrar of voters. Yeah. Going in, um, group of 10 to 15 people, we're not saying bring an army, 
the first time. <laughs> Being a group of people, let your registrar know this is something that the voters in your county are interested in yeah. and want them to get behind or block. Or block internet voting, mm -hmm. but um, or some other stupid bills. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, go talk to your registrar. Do not go in as the enemy. Mm -hmm. If you go in and it's the enemy, they're going to get defensive real quick. And uh, for registrars who are not elected, um, they can simply not see you. Yeah. Well, yeah, then you go to the supervisors because it's the supervisors that appoint them. Mm -hmm. And if you're not getting any kind of response from the registrar, and most of them will talk with you. Mm -hmm. And I think they all, they're all charming. They all go to the same charm school. And, and <laughs> Joe Cantamia has been pretty open door policy yeah. with us, I've got to yeah. say, in Contrast uh, County. Most of them will, will sit down and talk with you and, and listen with you and, and try to convince you that the elections are conducted correctly. Um, don't make it personal. Mm -hmm. It's not about them. It's about the transparency. It's about the fact that these systems are not reliable. Make it about the mm -hmm. systems. Make it about the procedures. Make it about the audits. Don't make it about them because mm -hmm. they'll get defensive and you're going to fail. Mm -hmm. And it's really mostly not about them. They're just trying to do their job. There's a few bad out, really bad apples out there. Michael Vu, we're watching you. <laughs> um, there's some really bad apples out there, but mostly they want to mm -hmm. just want to do their job. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So we talked about registrars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Let's see leadership of legislators. Yeah, legislature. The president of the assembly, the president of the senate. Ultimately, they have a lot of clout, mm -hmm. and we've been faced with situations where the leadership was pushing internet voting. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to fight that tooth and nail. We won. But we were hearing, oh, the leadership wants it because mm -hmm. they think it will increase turnout mm -hmm. and the leadership was democratic and there's this idea that um, the turnout will be, will help the Democrats so they wanted to have internet voting and we had to fight that tooth and nail. We blocked four bills we, along with the Secretary of State, and in one time we had a whole bunch of people in for a committee hearing, but the three other, other committee hearings, we were the only people to show up, mm -hmm. three of us. Um, Pretty impressive. Three people can shut it down. <laughs> well, with the Secretary of State, mm -hmm. I don't want to take full credit for that, but somebody had to show up from the public and say, we don't like this. Mm -hmm. And so that had some influence. Mm -hmm. um, the CACEO? -C -C That's the registrar's organization. Mm -hmm. We you have to deal with them. Mm -hmm. and, and again, they will support, oppose, or take no position on, on a bill. And do they don't have, want them opposing a bill that you want. Do they have quarterly meetings together? Do they have a Monthly. yearly seminar together? The whole registrar organization has a yearly meeting, but they have a legislative committee that gets to Sacramento once a month. Mm -hmm. it, did most of the registrars show up, show up for that? Uh, I would say about two dozen. That sounds like a good, that sounds like a good target. Yeah, only uh -huh. you have to get invited to speak. Uh -huh. And we did get another registrar, Carolyn Cernich, invited to speak mm -hmm. uh, for 15 minutes. We tried last year and didn't get invited to speak, and that proved to be a problem because when they came out opposing the bill in their letter, it was clear they didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. There was a couple things in there. You guys... So it would behoove us to be speaking to... It be, would behoove election integrity activists to be speaking um, to their registrars on a regular basis yeah. to try to get invited. Yeah. Especially... Mm -hmm. Well, we talked with the co-chairs of the committee mm -hmm. and gave us the impression that things were moving along fairly well. But when we got this letter saying mm -hmm. no, 
we were pros and then we understood that it, from the contents of the letter there were things they did not understand. Got it. So I have to go back and also then we need to talk to individual registrars mm -hmm. specifically in Contra Costa uh, it's not the registrar but an assistant go that goes to the legislative committee and mm -hmm. sit down with them and say you know talk That's about true. it and say no we're not trying to recertify machines mm -hmm. for example. Right. And they say, oh, you, this could force recertification machines, which would be long and expensive. And so we didn't say that. You know, you're reading that in there. So you have to get the, the proper information in there. Got it. All right. So shall we talk about what the timeline for introducing a bill is? Yeah, we're in that phase right now. Mm -hmm. You have to write a proposal. We'll get that into that a little bit. We had in California, it may be different in other states. This is where you need to find out how, how it works in your state. Um, you have to have a proposal introduced to Ledge Council. Mm -hmm. And in California, this was January 20th. And we got three introduced, one 15 minutes before the deadline. Uh, Ledge Council is an army of, of lawyers. Mm -hmm. And they take your proposal and they turn it into legalese. And so that was January 20th. The bill has to be introduced, a bill has to be introduced by, well, that was January yeah, 20th, by February, I think it's 20th in, California, in Sacramento. It has to be in the hopper. And you know it's in the hopper when they give it a number, A, B, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so we have three weeks left to find somebody to introduce one or more of these bills that we're proposing. Got it. Got it. Okay. So let's talk about um, what goes into a proposal. Um, Darren Chessman told me this eight, nine years ago. He's the consultant for the Senate. He's, you got to have what's the problem? How are you going to solve the problem? How much does it cost? And what are the benefits? That's the basic structure. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not that hard. I just follow that outline. I tend to, the last one that I just got in, I went and looked at the state election code and said, well, this will affect this section, this section, this section, without rewriting the legal lease. An important thing that where it's simpler uh, than may, people may understand is you don't have to write the legal lease. I've done this sometimes when it's fairly straightforward, but sometimes I, say, I don't know how they're going to do this. You may say, it is our intent that this happen. It is our intent that this happen. Now let them figure it out. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be a lawyer to write this. This thing. is what they have staffers for. That's what they have staffers <laughs> for. Yes. Your local assembly member or senator should submit this for you at his mm -hmm. courtesy. Mm -hmm. Normally, Let's repeat that so folks can hear it at home. When you go and speak to your legislator, their job is to write legislation. This is what you have elected them to do. When you go and you speak to your legislator, they have staffers in their office whose job it is to actually write the legislation yeah. that the legislator is going to bring before the House, um, either the Assembly or the Senate, and in our in our state of California, that would be in Sacramento, and they're going to push for this bill to move through the floor and hopefully to the governor's desk. Okay, you do not have to be a master of understanding that process. What you have to do is come with your heartfelt intention and do a few steps, and that's what we're sharing with you today, folks. So let's talk about that one more time. What is it that someone would have to do if they wanted to bring? Um, if they wanted to come with an intention that they wanted to see fashioned into legislation in their state. Let's say we want to have ballot images available for everybody. Mm -hmm. You go in, and this is the one we got in just before the deadline, and, and having been around a bit, I said, well, we want future machines to have the capacity to save ballot mm -hmm. images, the scanners, and then we want something set up. I had a little more detail in it. Uh, so that it's available to the public. It's our intent that future machines will have this capacity and then it is our intent that uh, they will be available to the public. Well, 
you can go into the, your district office if you don't live to the cap, close to the capital, and try to set up an appointment. But if you're a constituent, and constituents are important players here. They really, they really are. Uh, you have more clout in your own district that you live in than in somebody else's because the senator or assembly member wants your vote. So they will extend courtesies that will sit down and talk with you. And you can say, well, we would like uh, my assembly member to introduce this bill. And could you, as a courtesy, introduce, send this into Ledge Council? Mm -hmm. uh, and normally they'll do that as a courtesy. Um, and it, they may, will make clear that it's unbacked. It doesn't, it's, there's no promise that they're going to submit it as a real bill, but they'll get it into the hopper. Mm -hmm. So that's the step one, and now we're trying to find somebody to back the bills, to introduce it as legislation. Right on. And, yeah, we go in there and s with sincerity. Ultimately, you want to build up some political clout, too, but that's a different, different thing. Okay. So after you got, after, um, so folks at home, so we're following along a process. So after um, uh, legislation is proposed or a bill or the intention for a bill is proposed, then um, you have to work on getting people to, um, to pass the bill. So once it's actually written, it's got to be passed. So this is the lobbying process. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about how average citizens can be citizen lobbyists. I will add one thing. It helps if you actually are talking to legislators about bills in November, December, ahead of time. We usually are a little bit slow on this. Uh, we had lots to do between the conference, the election, and the recounts that we got a little bit late on that. But try to talk to people ahead of time. Talk to if you've you can go being a citizen lobbyist. Your legislators will hold town halls. They sometimes have public office hours, or they're cutting ribbons for someplace. Go talk to them. Mm -hmm. and, and, and start to talk about your concern about elections. Mm -hmm. And go in time and again, and just repeat. Show up with people. Go to local groups. Republican clubs, Democratic clubs, political groups, and especially those that are going to understand that elections are important, and talk to them, and, and get endorsements for your proposals. So you can say this is endorsed by this club, that that group, and so on. Uh, you show them that you're going out into the public and making this an issue, and that you're getting a resonance with the public, you're getting a response. Mm -hmm. That'll make them pay attention. Good stuff. All right, folks. I know you've probably got some questions at home. Uh, send them in. Yeah. Put them in the uh, comment section and let's address them. Okay, so um, let's talk about how to make contact. There's a lot of ways to make contact. Um, for Sacramento, we all, I've been calling up uh, specific offices. We already know the consultants for the elections committees, but now we've just, in the past week, we've gotten a list of who's on the elections committee, and then I'll call you know, the senator, and I'll call up and say, well, okay, who handles election bills in your office? And they'll say, so-and-so. Can I talk to them? And yeah, usually you leave a voice message and then you send an email. We're going to be, what we say, we're going to be in Sacramento on this date. We'd like to talk with you. And then do a follow-up call and, and, and just try to get in to talk with these people. January right now, they're not terribly busy, so that works. This is a good time to go and knock on your legislators' doors in Sacramento yeah. and have a chat. Or go back to the district. Now, legislators usually are back in their district on Fridays. So that may be a good time to talk to them. If you can, It's very hard to talk to a legislator. It's usually the staffers, but that's their job is to write a report about what was talked about. But you can always call your legislator, your assemblyman, or your senator's op state senator's office and ask when they're going to be in. 
You can ask when they're going to be in, but this is also why you want to buttonhole them back when they're in you know, doing a town hall forum or rim cutting ceremony or something out in the public. Hi, my name's Jim. I want to talk to you for a minute about uh, having good, fair, and accurate elections. We have a proposal that will do this. They'll so usually say, well, send it in to so and so. But you've just made a personal contact there. Mm -hmm. And you need to do that frequently. Very good. Because personal, personal contact uh, really helps. Mm -hmm. Another thing, sometimes constituents can get in to talk to staffers. Mm -hmm. Or in the case of the elections committee, I just said we took all the people on the elections committee. Uh, if you have expertise, if I call up and s try to talk to who's ever in charge of the health committee, I'm not going to get very far. But if I call up uh, a senator or assembly member on the elections committee and say, I'm with the Voting Rights Task Force, we've been doing this for 10 years, we'd like to sit down and talk with you about mm -hmm. our proposals. Well, that legislator is supposed to have some kind of expertise about elections because they're on the committee. Mm -hmm. They'll sit down and talk with you, usually. Mm -hmm. We talked with Congresswoman Lofgren three or four times, who was in our, isn't our congresswoman, but we got in once. We did our homework. Well, we spent a couple of days putting together PowerPoint mm -hmm. slides. So that when we went in, it went boom, 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 boom. We're not totally ignorant about what, what we're talking about here. We, we have facts, we have logic, et cetera. And we can invite her back. Because mm -hmm. that's an area that she's interested in. So either you have some kind of political power mm -hmm and or expertise or both, preferably both. If you have lots of money, that helps too. I'm not in that situation, <laughs> so we're trying to do uh, use mm -hmm. the other two. Mm -hmm. They want to get elected, and they want to do a good job, mm -hmm. both. So you, that's what you appeal to. So if you have a lot of expertise, you could go in by yourself. If you had a little expertise, you need backing to come in with friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So you can I produce see. votes. Mm -hmm. So you can pr produce votes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. So Jim, how would you say that um, face-to-face um, interview time or face-to-face -face lobbying with your legislator compares with emails, with phone calls, with any other type of contact? Well, they they keep a, a list of who sends in emails, who makes phone calls. And there's a there's a order. Face to face meeting mm -hmm. is the most important. Easily, mm -hmm. I mean, sh you Which just makes sense. Mm -hmm. You you've spent the time to study it. You show that, and you're spending the time for our case to drive out to Sacramento to sit down. Mm -hmm. uh, phone calls count more than emails. Mm -hmm. Emails. They're better than nothing. I guess they represent, I don't know, 10 people, sure. one, 10 voters. A phone call, 100, an in-person visit could be 1,000, 10,000 mm -hmm. voters. Again, it depends on how much you go out and talk to other people in their district. Um, so if you're going to send an email, you want to make sure you probably got a th that you've got 1,000 emails coming in yeah. from different people about the same they, issue don't need to be a PhD thesis. Do it in one paragraph. Cut and paste copying something from some right. thing isn't all that impressive. I would, you're just better off saying, I oppose this bill because I think it's uh, bad for transparency in elections. Mm -hmm. Done. Sign it, put in the subject header, bill number whatever, oppose, support. Because th what they're doing is just counting emails. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to read, well, the staffer may read the, through the whole thing if he thinks that you have real expertise. They may mm -hmm. do that. But when they're in a hurry, they're just going to the counting who's for and who's against. So you don't need to write a big email. Mm -hmm. You need to the say. The volume of emails The counts. number of emails counts. It does. Not the size of the email itself. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It also helps, again, when, when we talk about these groups, to get endorsements from different groups. Mm -hmm. We get endorsements from our local democratic clubs when 
uh, we're trying to influence Democrats. We, I, if we get something introduced, my assemblywoman is a Republican. I'll go out and talk to Republican groups to try to influence her vote. Um, so you want to talk to groups and show again that you have the political clout mm -hmm. to to influence votes. That's how democracy is supposed to work, and so make it work. Um, and so the next step would be how do we influence our Secretary of State? The same harder. process? Same kind of process, yeah. If he got 10,000 emails saying this is a stupid idea, he might be, well, you would pay attention. Mm -hmm. If you got 10,000, if you got 1,000, you'd probably pay attention. If he gets 10, mm, not so much. You need a heavy process. They are an elected official. They're going to want to win in the case of um, Secretary Padilla. He's, if he runs again, he's going to want to win again. And so he wants to get backing of the influential people. So it, it's a politician. Um, his scope is the whole state. So 10 people has less effect on them than 10 people in an assembly member's district. Mm -hmm. 10 people in an assembly member's district uh, call in or write in, that'll, that'll get noticed. Maybe not it change the vote, but it'll get noticed. It just so let's talk about how we could organize this through an activist um, hub like Ballots for Bernie. Well, that's what we're mm -hmm. doing now, and this is where we're very happy to be working with Ballots for Bernie and, and learning how to work Facebook because this year it's been cl become clear to me how much impact Facebook has mm -hmm. to get the word out of it. Best political organizing tool we've ever wrapped our opposable it's thumbs fabulous. around. It's <laughs> I've said so it so many times I could say it in my sleep. <laughs> I, I am now on numerous election integrity Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. There's days when I want to pull my hair out, but there's days like today where I had a couple important passed on a couple of important messages about a national conference in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. and then I was posting about our bills. Right, and we're trying to encourage people in California to talk to their local legislator and ask them to introduce one of the bills. Right, so folks um, folks at home across the country, I um, want you to listen in close because what we're going to be doing in California with Ballots for Bernie is hopefully role modeling behavior for the rest of the country. So California voters who are Ballots for Bernie members be on the lookout for an event page that's going to invite you to learn about the legislation that we are introducing in Sacramento. Um, and it's going to have links for you to contact your Congress people, your assemblyman and your senator from your district so that you can reach out, contact them. We're going to give you the contact information and we're going to give you a script that you can call, email, or hopefully go and have a face-to-face -face conversation. We want to guide you through the process, make it simple, stupid. Be looking for this event page because we're going to hit every member on our page. There's uh, different phases. Right now we're trying to get it introduced. We don't need a thousand, well it would help to have a thousand people, but there's only so many. You can't do it all mm -hmm. at once. We need some people to go visit district offices with copies of the bills. You will find these bills posted on Facebook at Voting Rights Task Force California. And in the middle of my webpage, countedascast.org, we have copies, or brief descriptions, and then links to the actual proposals. Uh, we need some of you to go out and try to convince your legislator to introduce this. If we get that introduced, then we go into a phase where we're trying to convince the elections committee. And we're focused then about on seven people, the consultant and the members of the committee. Mm -hmm. And then we'll ask everybody to contact those seven people, especially if you're in the district. Again, that will get more clout for them because all of my constituent uh, curious about this and thinks I should vote this way or that. We had a 
in the internet voting bill of a year ago, we had a very interesting situation where there, there was a bill being discussed in committee, mm -hmm. and it went three, three, and the seventh vote, the assembly member wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So I called up a colleague down in Los Angeles and said, you got to contact this guy now. Uh -huh. and tell him to at least abstain. An abstention is a no vote. They needed four votes to pass. She had been working with them, developing a relationship. Much of, I, I've talked with the state senator, oh, well, I've talked with lots of state senators. Much of this, why you go back in year in and year out is develop relationships. She had developed relationships with her assembly member's office. So she called up and said, you got, you got to stop this. Mm -hmm. And by the end of the day, we had an abstention and the bill Right died. on. Right on. But we were in committee. We saw what was going on. <laughs> Call up and, Mimi Kennedy, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mimi. <laughs> uh, and assembly member is uh, Nazarian, thank you. He they talked, and he abstained, and we killed that bill. Uh, it helped that we were there. It helped that Mimi had developed the relationship over time. And, and you talk to these people, and you get to know them, and then you get to know, get through, hey, this is Mimi. I got to talk to you now. You know, and, and then it works. So Good stuff. That's Good stuff. building stuff over time. Okay. So then it goes into the elections committee, and then we focus on those seven. All right. So Jim sounds like a good start to legislation for our novices at home yeah. who have never been involved in the legislation process. Um, and we're going to be talking more about these bills as we go on. Um, is there anything else that we want to talk to our viewers at home today about? Well, a couple of things. Um, one, we've learned, we're, we're still doing this, we're still learning. We sort of have known this before, but we were there last uh, you know, last Thursday, Thursday before, we'll go up to Sacramento with two or three fixed appointments, and then okay, who's on the election? We have extra time. Who's the election committee? We'll go in, and or we had the last time we had. Uh, I was trying to get to somebody who wasn't responding. And I said, "Heck, let's just go say hello," because she was really responsive in August, and then somewhere it dropped down the black hole. Went in. Hi, can we talk for a moment? Uh, we talked for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, full of apologies, and, and yes, we're still interested in, and you should talk to this other person. Mm -hmm. So we did what we call a drop, and just go in, we did a drop in there, mm -hmm. that led to the other one, we go on another one, and said, well, so-and-so's office said we should talk to somebody here, because mm -hmm. you apparently are interested in elections. Mm -hmm. Oh, we sat down for half an hour with a staffer. Uh, she called me up a week ago Friday and said, uh, we liked your proposals. I said, which one? She said, the third one. <laughs> You're calling me about the third one. He didn't even write anything. And, but thank you for calling. Uh, I've got an hour. So I wrote something up. Fortunately, here I had experience. I could whip something together, a placeholder. It's going to be amended, but it's enough to get into ledge council. We got it in, but that's because of two drop-ins. We showed up, we knocked on doors, and and it worked. You have to put the time in. You have to put the time in. You have to be a bit bold mm -hmm. at certain times, of, or bold. I mean, you go in about a third of the just cold calls. Well, we don't know anybody, about a third of them, we will sit down with the staff here and have an extensive discussion. In the case of the first one, I had talked with them in extensively, we had talked with them in August, and so she knew my face, she knew who I was, and so yeah, she'd give us 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. and we talked, and she took the proposals and go talk to this person's office. So we went over and bingo. I don't know if we're gonna get something in. I know we're trying, and I know we're doing a lot better doing that than sitting home and writing on Facebook mm -hmm. or writing tweets. Facebook helps. It's really good for getting the information out, but the decision makers usually aren't on Facebook. Mm -hmm. They're in the halls of the Capitol. Mm -hmm. so that's who you need to talk to. 
All right. And that's so, true for your state too, wherever you are. Yeah. So do we foresee a time uh, in the next month or so where we could possibly um, organize some of our ballots for Bernie folks to go to Sacramento with us so that we could see what this process looks like? There's two things going on. Um, one, again, please, even if you're one individual, go in and visit your district office and say, I'd like you to introduce, meet the three bills, pick one if you like or a couple, and say, I'd like you to introduce this. Sacramento is going to have, they just announced that they're going to have a hearing on the ESMS election system. I think it's December 2nd. If you go to Ballots for Bernie, I believe I posted it there. I think you did. Uh, if you go to the Election Integrity Facebook page, I posted it there. If you look, go to the Ballot uh, Voting Rights Task Force California page, I, I posted it there. They will have a hearing about the ESMS election systems, whether or not they should or should not certify. That's kind of a technical one. But if there's something where we see this is egregiously bad, we're going to send out a notice and ask people to show up and say, no, this is egregiously bad. Mm -hmm. If there happened to be something egregiously good, we would do the same. There's going to be, at some point in the future, from a bill in 1970, hearings on how we process provisional and absentee ballots, which had a lot of problems last year. A lot. We will send out a huge notice for that, because, mm -hmm. yeah, we want to pack that auditorium. Bring your leftover agitation with you on that, folks. That's, that's going to be a big one. Mm -hmm. And then when it gets good, when these bills go on its election committees, if we get one introduced, we'll want support. If we see another bill about internet voting, which is would not surprise me at all, or mm -hmm. some other, we saw a horrible bill about vote by mail. Mm -hmm. We need to have more turnout than just the Voting Rights Task Force about that. Last year, it was just Richard Dam and myself. And we, we, we spoke out, and then we tried to, to lobby against it. When it made it to the floor, we just didn't get enough people to, to oppose it. Mm -hmm. And the again, the Democratic leadership is encouraging vote by mail. Mm -hmm. The Republicans were with us. It was something where they're going to send out ballots to everybody with no check. Anybody could bring in a truckload of ballots. It's really frightening. <laughs> with no questions asked. Here's a truckload of ballots, count them. And before you could only be, had to be a family member or household member to bring in vote by mail ballots, and all of a sudden, boom, bring in a truckload, no questions asked. We tried to block that. Maybe in a, in a couple of years we'll go back and say, you need some rules about this. We have to know who's bringing those things in. Um, when you, when, when a, Things are in committee. When it goes to the floor vote, we really need a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And when it goes to the governor, we need a lot of people. And we're going to work on getting those people together. Yeah. All that's, right. That's clout that we need and we're going to get. Okay. All right. Well, this has been an exciting discussion today. Is there anything else that we want to talk about as far as legislation going uh, to the Capitol, Jim? Um, no, I just want to encourage people to get involved, to, especially in the other states. California is the only state right now that has citizens going in and proposing bills. And that would really just be you, right? <laughs> well, really just be the BRCF. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know there's people, good yeah. people in Texas. I know there are good people in New York. I know there are people in, in Wisconsin and Michigan. But we need to get people feet in the street going in and talking. Yeah. And going and talk and go talk to the decision makers. All right. All right, folks, that's good stuff. Legislation 101, we are glad to be here. Educate, agitate, demonstrate, and legislate. legislate. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank we'll you. see you on the next um, session of Ballots for Bernie.